All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is it, the start of a brand new adventure. An adventure in which many of you will die. Uh, I've got a nice little list of names here, 26 to start out with. That'll keep us through the first uh, few battles. And we are going to go in and play Open XCOM. So first of all, let's talk about the options I'm using real quick. Um, in the advanced things, there are a whole bunch of options here that don't entirely correlate with how the original game was. A lot of them are just kind of quality of life things. Some of them change how the game plays, and I'm not using those, but I've turned on inventory stats, which means I'll be able to see information about each individual soldier when I'm equipping them, which wasn't in the original. I've turned on enhanced soldier sprites, which means the battlescape sprites will look how the soldiers look in the inventory. Yes, this does mean some of you will look like women or people of different races, and I really don't have control over that, so just is going to happen. I've turned it on to auto end the battle when the last living enemy is neutralized instead of playing through the rest of the turn before you find out. And I've disabled auto equip, which means the computer will not automatically assign inappropriate equipment to people before the battle starts and make me take it away. Uh, I have no mods on. Control wise, I've made a few control changes to make things easier. We'll talk about those more as we get on. I will talk about the differences between Open XCOM and the original uh, XCOM UFO Defense as we proceed. But for now, we're going to start a new game. It is going to be on Superhuman, which means a lot of us are going to die. I will be playing this Iron Man, however, I will not be activating the Iron Man button because Open XCOM does sometimes crash. And if it gets into a situation where it's going to crash and I don't have a backup save, then there is no saving the game. I, I won't be able to go back a little ways and restart, I'll just have to restart from scratch which I don't want. So we're not going to turn on Iron Man. We are going to have backup saves. I just won't be using them. All right, let's get going. So this is the first screen you see in XCOM. Here we have to select a site for our new base somewhere in the world. Things to keep in mind. Uh, the little circles that you see around where I'm putting my cursor are radar detection circles. So you have a small radar, a large radar, and then later in the game you have a building called the Hyperwave Decoder. Um, their radiuses go in that order from smallest to largest. Small radar is the inner small circle, then the large radar, and then the hyperwave decoder. That range is the range within which it will be possible, not guaranteed, but possible, for you to detect UFOs. Outside that range, of course, you don't have a chance. So, what you want is to place your base so that that circle covers many important areas of the world, specifically so it covers many countries who are giving you money. There's two basic strategies if you want to be efficient about your base placement. One is to place it in Central America somewhere where it can cover most of the US, who is your single largest funding nation, and also some of Central America and South America who also provide funding nations. The other strategy is to place it in Europe somewhere where it can cover all the nations in Europe who are all funding you and parts of Northern Africa and the Middle East where you get some funding from. Uh, there is also the strategy of putting it over in China or Australasia somewhere where it can provide that coverage. That gets you a little bit less money protection. And since how well you do is largely based on what the funding council thinks of you, uh, generally I think it's better to place it in the Western world, which probably reflects something about the, uh, the Western sensibilities of the developers. But in any case, for this game, I'm going to place my base in Turkey right here at the Straits of Bosphorus near Constantinople. And we will call it... Um, let's be Eurocentric about it. We're going to call it Eurocom, European Command. Okay, so you can see, time immediately starts moving. Over here I have $4 million. It is Friday the 1st of January, in the far-flung future of 1999. Let's go into our base. So this is our basic starting base. You can see I have three big hangar bays with crafts in them, a Sky Ranger and two interceptors. I have a workshop where I can build things, a lab where I can research things, a general stores where I keep things, a small radar that finds things, a living quarters where people sleep. I'm sorry, I broke the streak. Uh, I also have the access lift. Now, something to keep in mind about base configuration. Um, eventually, it's possible that aliens will attack you in your base, and when they do, this layout will determine what the playing field looks like. Aliens can come in through access points. Access points are your hangar base and the access lift. So, looking at this layout, do you see a problem with that? Yeah, so do I. The aliens will start surrounding you if they invade this base. This is a terrible defensive layout. So the very first thing I'm going to do, I start off with $4 million, is I'm going to build some new stuff. First of all, we're going to build a new hangar right there. 
and a new hangar right there. They have a number on them that tells us how long it will take them to be completed. The reason I'm building the hangars there is so that I can demolish these hangars and move those planes to those hangars. That will mean all the aliens will be coming from this direction if they ever attack us. Other things we need. We are going to need more storage, so we're going to build the general stores. We are going to need another large radar, rather as opposed to a small radar, which we will put right there. Those will stack, so within the range of each, our detection chance for a UFO will go up. We will need uh, another laboratory pretty quickly for more research, so we're going to build a lab. And we're also going to need another living quarters, so I'm going to build that as well. That's all my construction for now. I've already spent three quarters of my money. In this screen, we see all the soldiers we currently have. None of them have received their uh, their code names yet. They will in just a moment. In this screen, we can see all our available personnel, how much space is used and how much space is available in our various different uh, settings, what the strength of our defenses is, right now it's none, and our powers of short and long range detection. This is actually fairly irrelevant because there's a bug in UFO, uh, Enemy Unknown or XCOM UFO Defense that governs how radars interact with each other. Basically, theoretically, you should be able to stack a whole bunch of radars. Actually, you can only stack one short and one long. And after that, they don't actually stack effectively. Uh, actually, also in that screen, you can see our monthly costs compared to our income for our salaries, for our units, and rental for our aircraft. That's right, we are renting these planes. We didn't buy them. We are poor as dirt. So, let's look at our soldiers, first of all, and give them names. I'm just going to go down the list, and then I'll talk about stats. So you, Inga, your code name is Rodrigo de Amas. You are Night, Stalk uh, Night Stalker. You, uh, nope. Thought I moved on. You here are Adam Manalo. We've got Gaston. We've got Happery. Some of these people, interestingly, are uh, members of a previous forum Let's Play I did of this game. So good to see you all back, Happery and Night Stalker, several of the others. High Priest, another vet. We've got Chin Strapnel. And we've got, one second. Jarell Cortese. Okay, that's our eight original soldiers. So let's see how they are. Rodrigo de Armas. All of these stats are hugely, hugely important. Well, some of them are less important than others. Time units govern how much activity you can perform during a turn. Stamina con uh, controls how much, how much movement you can do depending on how much stuff you're carrying, basically. Um, as you move, you'll use up stamina, and your stamina refills a certain percentage every turn that you don't. Uh, perform activities. It actually refills a certain amount every turn, but performing activities reduces you to the base recharge rate as opposed to your full stamina. Health, of course, is self-evident. That's how many hits you can take. Bravery is a super important stat later in the game. Early on, not so much, but this stat affects how easily you panic, berserk, uh, how, how easily you're affected by things going wrong, which they will go wrong in XCOM. Reactions governs how likely you are to be able to take a reaction shot during the alien turn, which also is governed by how many time units you have left at the end of your turn. So if you don't do much during your turn, your odds of being able to react during the enemy turn go up. Firing accuracy governs how accurate you are with shooting guns, a major XCOM activity. Throwing accuracy governs how accurate you are with throwing grenades. Melee accuracy is how accurate you are in melee, which there's only one edge case where that's useful, but it's a very important edge case. And strength governs how much you can carry and how far you can throw things like grenades, electro flares, etc. So Rodrigo de Armas, he's brave, he's relatively fast, he has lots of stamina, and he's strong as a horse, but his firing accuracy is pretty pitiful and his reactions are eh, unexceptional. 
Overall, Rodrigo is an acceptable soldier, but not a special one. Sorry, Rodrigo. Night Stalker. Uh, very similar, actually. Very strong. Low firing accuracy, low reactions, very high bravery. I think that's the maximum possible initial bravery. And decent time units and stamina. Well, pretty low health, though. Adam Mano Manalo, on the other hand, is a sniper. Almost the highest maximum firing accuracy. Uh, pretty decent strength, pretty decent throwing accuracy. However, he's a coward. Does have decent reactions. Gaston has pretty high firing accuracy, high bravery, high time units, reasonably high strength, middling reactions, good. A plus Gaston. Happery has very high reactions, middling firing accuracy, decent strength, good time units. Uh, overall, Happery is a solid scout type. High Priest, uh, similar, very high reactions, middling to low firing accuracy. Okay strength, okay time units. Chin Strapnel is a fantastic soldier. Chin Strapnel is probably my best soldier yet. High time units, high bravery, very high reactions, high firing accuracy. Okay strength, he's not a heavy weapons trooper, but his strength is enough that he'll be able to carry basic gear. So Chin Strapnel is going to be one of my go-tos, definitely, which inevitably means he's going to die. Uh, Jarrell Cortez... Pretty decent heavy weapons trooper, good strength, good reactions, eh, not terrible firing accuracy, and decently brave. Okay, so those are our initial eight. We are going to, the very first thing we're going to do, actually, there needs to be some maintenance done because some people have screwed this thing up. When we come in, XCOM is in dire straits. Our interceptors have weapons that they use to shoot down UFOs. They initially start with a Stingray missile and a cannon. Cannons are garbage. They're absolutely worthless, so the very first thing we do is we take all the cannons off. And we sell them to free up storage space, because initially we are storage limited. So we're going to sell the cannons and the cannon rounds. We also have some infantry weapons. I'm actually going to keep the heavy cannon so I can show it off in battle and talk about it. Normally I don't do that because I don't really like heavy cannons, but they can be useful. Uh, auto cannons I love, rocket launchers I love. So all we're going to do right now is sell the cannons, the cannon rounds, and these extra Stingray missiles, because we're not going to be using Stingrays. We are going to purchase three more Avalanche launchers, uh, and yeah, five more missiles. Then, for our weaponry, we are going to purchase Electro Flares for our troops, Proximity Grenades for the troops, and a couple of stun rods, plus some more smoke grenades, because we will need smoke grenades. We're also going to buy a few large rockets. We start off with only small rockets. I like the large ones, because I love collateral damage. It's my favorite. We're also going to buy a tank with a rocket launcher and some heavy weapons platform rockets. And there's our storage space limit. We do run into that very, very quickly. Okay. So, uh, nope, not build facilities. You can see we're going to be maxed out on storage. Down here, we can see everything that's coming in and how long it will take. So it will take four days to get the rocket launcher tank, two days to get the rockets for it, and the missiles for the airplanes, and one day to get all of the infantry gear. Here is where we can equip the Sky Ranger, which is our transport. We already have all eight of our soldiers on board, and here we can see all the equipment they're taking with them. Right now, that's one heavy cannon. Uh, yeah, we'll keep a little bit of armor-piercing ammo on there, as well as the high explosive. One auto cannon, which only has armor-piercing ammo at the moment. One rocket launcher with small rockets. Um, I don't actually need all three. We'll take the auto cannon off for now until it gets high explosive rounds. Uh, we need all the grenades, all the smoke grenades. We also have some basic pistols and some basic rifles, which are just starting game, uh, simple earthling weapons. And we have no armor whatsoever because we don't have any research and we're too cheap to give anybody any, I don't know, Kevlar or anything. In the research screen, before we start time, we are going to start researching laser weapons, which is by far the highest priority of these three kits. Medic kits, eh, maybe when you're valuable. And manufacturing, we have nothing we can manufacture as of yet, so right now our engineers are just sitting around smoking, playing cards, and collecting their salaries. So when we go back to the geoscape, time begins to move. This controls how much time moves per frame, I believe it is, per impulse. And we're going to kick it up to one hour. Yep, not enough Stingray missiles to rearm our interceptor, that's fine. We've detected our first UFO. 
So this Geoscape screen is where you spend a lot of the time in the game. Not all that much because you can crank the time up to make time pass faster, but uh, significant time. With UFO-1, UFO-1 we can see is very small. It is high. It's moving east and its speed is 1628. Our, the maximum speed of our interceptors right now is 2100. So it is slow enough to intercept. So let's center on the UFO. We can see it's there moving over Russia. We're going to send Interceptor 1 up after it. Okay, so we can see a picture of the UFO. Uh, this is a very small one-man pod, essentially. It only has one alien inside. It has nothing really of value. We're just going to shoot it down. And it's destroyed. One hit from an avalanche. By the way, you can go into the UFOpedia to see information about everything. If we look at the avalanche, uh, notice, this is a nuclear AAM. We just hit it with a nuke and exploded it. Has a 60 kilometer range, damage, accuracy, reload time, etc. You can work out DPS from this in general. Avalanches are the best weapons. Stingrays are early game substitutes. And cannons are pretty much worthless. They can do damage, but you have to get so close and their accuracy is so low that they're just not worth using. Now you can also see this information will increase as we learn things, as we research things, as we find things out about the aliens. The UFOpedia is actually a really useful asset for first-time players. Um, one thing we can look at is we can look at our weapons and equipment, and they give us some stats. So you can see our pistols have a certain amount of accuracy. We can fire snap or aimed shots. I'll talk more about what that means later on. And they do this much damage per hit. Now this value... Mechanically speaking, this value is actually the mean. They do an amount of damage between zero and twice this, if I've got it correct. Yeah, zero and double this value. Rifles do a little bit more damage and also have an auto shot available, which can fire multiple rounds. They have their aimed shot on rifles is highly, highly accurate. This cost over here is the percentage of the soldier's total time units it will take to fire a shot of that kind. The, where's our other weapons? The heavy cannon, you can see, does quite a bit more damage. Is a little bit less accurate than the rifle. High explosive does 52 high explosive damage, which is handled differently. The auto cannon does more damage than the rifle, but less than the heavy cannon. The difference is it has an auto shot, so it can really chug out rounds. And the rocket launcher does a crap ton of high explosive damage with pretty high accuracy. Uh, rocket launchers will stay relevant almost to the end of the game, until you get something better that replaces them. Grenades do a certain amount of high explosive damage. Smoke grenades put out smoke, which is not damage, but it's a terrain effect. And proximity grenades do even more damage than regular grenades, and they are triggered by movement after they land. Proximity grenades will entirely replace standard grenades as soon as I get them in. And high explosives do just a whopping ton of damage, but can only be thrown a very short way and are very, very heavy. Stun rods are the only melee unit in the game, the only melee weapon rather, and they do stun damage which can knock people unconscious when we want to take prisoners. For torture, I mean research. Electro flares are also vital equipment, we'll talk about them when we have a night mission, which will probably be soon. Okay, so we've got some of our gear. Let's go equip the Sky Ranger real quick. A lot of this, this first episode is going to be base keeping. Uh, that's just kind of how the game runs early on. We're going to take all eight rockets, but actually we'll need six. We're going to get all the proximity grenades, all the stun rods, and all the electro flares on there, as well as all the smoke grenades. These standard grenades can just come off. I'm going to sell them. For the heavy cannon, I'll keep one. I'm actually going to sell the other one because we just don't need two. They're not very efficient. So now, one interesting thing to note, things that you put on your planes come out of storage, so they don't take up storage space. So when I equip the Sky Ranger, I'm lowering the amount of storage space that we're using in the base, which can open up more room for other things, like more heavy weapon platform rockets. Alright, so we've got the avalanche launchers and some avalanche missiles, which means we can now arm our planes entirely with avalanches. This will down check them for three hours, so if we detect a UFO immediately, eh, it might get away. But being able to clear those out of inventory will help. We get a few more avalanche missiles. Since we have four launchers, I want at least 20 missiles. And then we'll buy a few more heavy weapon platform rockets. 
You can never have too many of those. We have completed research in laser weapons. And yeah, that took us like 15 days, something like that. Which means we can now research laser pistols. Oh, nope, not medikits. You don't deserve medicine yet. Yeah, it took us four days, sorry. We've got the rocket launcher tank, so we are going to put that on the Sky Ranger. And we have two spaces available. We should hire a couple more soldiers. I'm actually going to hire eight more soldiers to have a total of 16. So we'll have some replacements for the ones who inevitably die. Okay, a few more soldiers to name. Let's get it going. We're going to start with Eric Tams. Eric Tams is pretty solid. Not too bad. Decent reactions, decent firing accuracy, pretty good bravery. Uh, Lord Kappa. Uh, Lord Kappa is... Sorry, bro, you're a meat shield. Uh, low reactions, low bravery, middling health, low time units. Okay, strength. Actually, I take it back. You're a Grenadier. You have high throwing accuracy and decent strength, so I'm just going to give you a whole bunch of proximity grenades and stuff. Kim Hulk uh, might grow to be a sniper uh, as she gets some experience. Darker Mist is already a sniper, a cowardly weak sniper, but a sniper nonetheless, so you'll just kind of lurk in the background taking pot shots, I think. Gretel Ostrich. Hmm. Middling. Middling. Decent firing accuracy. Pretty good reactions. Okay time units. Alexander Hop. Uh, good heavy weapons trooper. Lots of strength. Lots of strength, decent firing accuracy. Unfortunately, kind of a chicken. Good old Darth Daka has, uh... Hmm, yeah, I think Darth Daka is also kind of a spear carrier. We'll see, though. Sometimes it's the guys with the worst stats who actually end up surviving and becoming the champions of the run. That That's happened more times than I can count. And finally, Adrian... Shepard. Adrian Shepard is one of the bravest troops I've ever seen, and has high strength, so he's a fantastic heavy weapons trooper. Wish his firing accuracy was a little higher, but uh, hey, you can't have everything. Let's see if we can get into a fight real quick. Sometimes it takes a little while for the aliens to show up. We've got a new general stores, which is nice. We've completed research on the laser pistol, so we can see by, compar by stat comparison if we look at the original pistol, 26 damage, snapshot, aimed shot, 60-70% accuracy. The laser pistol, 46 damage, 28-40 and 68% accuracy. The laser pistol also takes no ammunition. It's a laser, it just has ammunition inside it, you never need to reload it. This is a fantastic weapon compared to our basics. We're going to research the laser rifle next, which is the upgraded two-handed version. And then we are immediately going to put our engineers onto building laser pistols, and we are going to build just a ton of them. It'll take 12 days to finish all 10. We will get some finished before that. It's actually nice that the aliens are holding off long enough for us to uh, get laser pistols up. If they hold off a few more days, we'll have our hangars and our laboratory and everything up, too. We already have more stores, but right now there's nothing else I need to buy, and I am a little short on funds. Oh, we found another UFO. Okay, hopefully we can get into a fight here. Let's send Interceptor 1 out to get him, and while we're thinking about it, let's put those five laser pistols we've built onto the Sky Ranger. If we don't need all these weapons then, we're going to take those three pistols and the clips away. We will never use pistols again, because laser pistols are superior in every way. So while we're in the base screen, we're just going to sell those off to get them out of inventory. And let's see if we can intercept this UFO. Oh no, don't lose it. Okay, you can patrol with your interceptors. Uh, we're going to see if we can reacquire that UFO. I don't know where it went. Oh, come on, man. 
We must have caught it on the way out. Okay, go back to base. Wow, the whole first month and no contact. That is kind of depressing. Okay, we are actually going to keep manufacturing laser pistols because um, in the original game this button wasn't here, but in Open XCOM you have a sell button right there. Normally what you would do is you would manufacture these things and then you just sell them. But I can just press this button and they'll be sold automatically as they're produced. This makes significant money. Laser pistols are quite efficient because you can manufacture them for like $8,000 and sell them for I think $20,000. So that's what we're going to do. It'll take one day and six hours to build each laser pistol, and every time we do that, we get an influx of cash. Um, as to who we're selling these to, don't think too hard about it. African warlords, probably. Maybe assassins. Uh, generally unsavory people. But hey, gotta do what you can do to save the world. Okay, so, we are going to have a baptism by fire. When this screen pops up, what this means is a large UFO has snuck in somewhere, gone to a city, landed, and started terrorizing the populace. Uh, lovely art, by the way. So, alien shock troops are now in a major city, Pretoria, which I believe is South Africa. Yep. And we have to go and rescue everybody. So, let us first fill up the Sky Ranger. It can have two more soldiers. We're going to take Eric Tams and Lord Kappa. Equipment-wise, we've got a rocket launcher... We've got 10 laser pistols, smoke grenades, proximity grenades, stun rods, a rocket launcher tank, some rifles, a heavy cannon. Yeah, let's do this thing. Um, let's not forget before we do this thing to buy some high explosive auto cannon ammo. All right, we who are about to die salute you. Or we salute those who are about to die, more likely. Oh no, it's nighttime. Some some missions you can delay, terror sites you can't. You have to go after them, you lose a huge amount of points if you don't fight. Alright, it's a terror mission. Mission will be successful when all enemy units have been eliminated or neutralized. You must attempt to save the lives of any civilians in the area. There are civilians in the area, they're a huge pain in the rear. By neutralizing the alien menace. To abort the mission, return XCOM operatives to transport vehicle and click on the abort mission icon. Might actually have to do that, but we'll see. So before we go into battle, we will be equipping our soldiers. All our weapons are down here. Our soldiers are up here. Here's the lovely blonde Rodrigo de Almas. Uh, over here, you can see he has 40 strength and 45 accuracy. So he's strong, but not accurate, or she. Which means she's getting a rocket launcher. We'll put a couple rockets in her backpack, and she'll have a laser pistol sidearm. Uh, that puts her overweight, which will lower her time units. We're actually going to take one of those rockets away. We're also going to give her... We'll actually put that laser pistol in her hand. We are also going to give her a proximity grenade and an electro flare. Actually, we'll put the electro flare in her hand. In this mission, everyone will need at least one electro flare. Let's make it two prox grenades. Night Stalker. 37 strength. Does anybody have higher? No. Okay. Night Stalker gets the heavy cannon. It's currently loaded with HE rounds, which we don't actually want. We'll take one HE round, but then we're going to load it with high explosive. Um, we're not going to give him a pistol, because the heavy cannon he can use in AP mode as a close defense weapon, but we are going to give him an Electro Flare. Adam Manalo is a standard rifleman. He's going to get a rifle. Um, he's going to get a rifle clip on his belt. Standard gear there. He has 12 extra weight, so we're going to give him a stun rod in case he has to go into melee, which is normally a terrible idea, but might be useful. It is sometimes worth sacrificing somebody for uh, to be able to capture an alien, although I don't think I have an alien containment built. I don't. Never mind. It is not worth sacrificing anybody to capture an alien. Uh, and since he has a little bit of extra weight, we're actually going to give him an extra round of grenades. Gaston, uh, Gaston, yeah, Adam has high accuracy, so he's going to be staying back in a support role, so using him to lob grenades is probably a good idea. We're going to give Gaston some gear.
Happery. Happery has 50 reactions. That means he's a scout. He is going to have a laser pistol, prox grenades, and electro flare, as well as a smoke bomb. So the laser pistol takes a lot less time to fire than the rifles, which means that with high reactions, if we can have Happery kind of lurking around in front of the, the gang, if an alien rounds a corner, he has a chance, a low chance, but a chance, of being able to spray it with laser bolts while it is still figuring out what's going on. High Priest also has good reactions, so he gets the same gear. And in fact, we'll give him another smoke grenade. Chin Strapnel, high accuracy and high reactions. This procedure is tedious. You don't have to do it in full every time you go on a mission. Uh, the game will actually remember this equipment, or Open XCOM will. Original XCOM did not, so that's definitely one of the quality of life improvements. Jarrell. Jarrell gets a standard rifle. Uh, having something in your free hand when you're holding a two-handed weapon does decrease your accuracy, so going guns akimbo is a bad strategy. However, having an electro flare in your hand at the start of a night mission drastically improves the uh, the life expectancy of everyone on the mission, so it's a good idea. Actually, since I think we have enough laser pistols for pretty much everybody, I'm going to stop handing out uh, rifles at this point until we run out of laser pistols. Laser pistols are superior weapons, less accurate, but much faster firing. Okay, that's our gear. Now, whoever's underweight, uh, Jarrell's a little bit underweight, we're going to give him an extra rocket to carry. Chin Strapnel. Uh, Chin Strapnel will actually be out front, so let's not give him the rockets. We've got a pretty good spread of reactions in this group. We've got several people with reactions over 50. Uh, yeah, Happery, you get a rocket. High Priest gets a rocket. And I guess Chin Strapnel does get a rocket. Okay, we've got all our rockets sent out. We do have a few grenades we're not using. So let's find somebody who can carry more grenades. Uh, yeah, Eric, you carry more grenades. Lord Kappa, you carry more uh, electro flares. You can have another grenade, Happery. Gaston can have another electro flare. And another smoke bomb. Okay, let's go. So, this is the combat map. You can see, if I right-click, I rotate my unit. I can scroll up and down to change levels. The game has multiple Z levels. And I can right-click and hold to drag the map around. Right now we have the Sky Ranger, which we can see with everybody inside it, some light on the ground, and then darkness around us. So what we are going to do, first of all, is we're going to find Night Stalker. Uh, Night Stalker doesn't have a smoke bomb. Neither does Rodrigo. Okay, we're going to move the tank outwards. And the tank immediately takes auto fire from a plasma weapon. Over there we can see there's an alien lurking in the darkness. Uh, it looks like a floater? Not sure. In any case, the tank is going to disembark in this direction and get shot from behind as well. What the tank's doing right now is eating the enemy reaction fire when you start a scenario. The enemy, uh, yep, that's a, we'll talk about that in a minute. That's a big orange booty. Uh, the enemy starts with full time units on the first turn. So having a tank is fantastic because it can suck up the fire with its high armor and high health without dying. Now this tank needs to get down on the ground and take a snapshot at him with its rockets. When you hear a scream, that means the alien has died. If the alien falls down without a scream, they are merely unconscious and could wake up later. Keep that in mind, it might save your hide. That was a Reaper, that big uh, orange dog thing, which we are glad to have dead because it can uh, run up and bite you to death in one turn. Quick uh, overview of the buttons. This moves up levels and down levels if the unit can fly. This changes the look, which you can also do with the mouse wheel. That opens the mini-map where you can see everything you can see. Over here, those X's indicate something dead or something on the ground. Blue dot is an alien. Yellow dots are you. You can see that little pulsing dot there is all of our equipment that we didn't equip on the ground in the Sky Ranger. The big dot here is our tank. That's the uh, Sky Ranger. 
We can see here we are in an enclosed urban environment because this is a terror mission. We've got a house there, a house there that we've just blown the wall up of, and another large building there, possibly a warehouse. This centers on the selected unit. That switches to the inventory screen for the selected unit. Tanks don't have an inventory, so right now clicking it does nothing. That crouches your unit or kneels them at the cost of some time units, which is very valuable for both increasing accuracy and evading incoming fire. That selects the next unit, that moves on and tells the game not to reselect the current unit, and that gives you the multi-level view, which shows solid objects as opposed to anything inside them. It's not very useful, to be honest. That opens up the options menu, where you can load, save, abandon the game, etc. That ends the turn, and that bugs out. If you click that button, you leave. So don't click that button. I think there is a confirmation screen, but I don't really use it much. So, there are at least two aliens over here with weapons dialed in on the Sky Ranger, which means we're not going to leave the Sky Ranger. We're going to put that on our belt. We're going to pick that up. Priming a grenade takes a whole bunch of time units. You then have to throw it. So you need basically full time units in order to prime and throw a grenade. We're going to activate that grenade, then drop it on the ground. It will go off and fill the area with smoke, which will make it harder to see us. Uh, it would have been more effective if we could have thrown that on the ground so we could debark into the smoke, but we didn't have the time for that. Adam Manolo now, he has some smoke grenades, and he might be able to get one out of the Sky Ranger. So let's prime that. It's going to take 12 to throw, so we can afford to move forward two spaces. And then let's try to throw it on the ground. Yeah, the guy right in front of him is blocking it, unfortunately. Uh, Rodrigo, you're too fat. He can't throw past you. What he can do, however, is throw it on the ground. At night, uh, he had to turn. I messed it up. Time units are tricky to manage. We're going to drop that smoke grenade and step aside. Let's let Gaston come over, pick it up, throw it to Night Stalker. Now Night Stalker can pick it up. I uh, notice that little grenade is activated thing down there. That means it's going to go off next turn because it hit the ground. And throw it out there. Grenades will not go off so long as they are in your inventory. If they ever hit the ground, they are activated and then they will go off next turn. Pretty much, I don't think picking them up at that point stops that. So, we've got a smoke grenade here, we've got a smoke grenade down there. That will provide decreased visibility, which is super, super important, because by default, at nighttime, aliens have better visibility than you do. Um, nighttime terror missions are the worst, and we're about to find out why. Also, the fire looks like skulls, which is pretty cool. That was the soundtrack of tension in my childhood. The shots, the screams, the... Just listen to the music for a second. That low, pulsing music, that stuff is great. Anyway, what you just heard there was all the aliens trying to shoot the civilians. Um, one of those death screams was an alien, so it sounds like one of the aliens accidentally shot another, which is fantastic. That's one alien that I don't have to kill. So you can see, we've got smoke. Smoke will lower visibility for anyone looking into it. There's a fairly complicated formula, but it basically boils down to if you are looking into smoke, you can't see as far. That is an alien standing next to a civilian. So what I want to do is actually move Rodrigo back here because he has a rocket launcher, and I don't want to fire a rocket launcher at a civilian. Um, when you throw items, keep in mind they have an arc, so the reason I wasn't able to throw here or here is that Rodrigo is currently under the Sky Ranger. If he tried to throw it, it would have hit the Sky Ranger at the top of its arc and dropped straight down. The game won't let that happen. You can only throw where it's possible to get to the targeted space. So Rodrigo has thrown his flare, gives us a little bit more visibility there. He's going to put his pistol in his hand. And then let's see if we can shoot this guy. Nope, no line of fire, the wheel is in the way. So just crouch down. Night Stalker is going to debark this way and throw his flare out in that direction. Okay, more buildings. The tank, uh, we're going to use the tank to kind of cruise around looking for enemies. And we have found one through the windows. Let's take a rocket pot shot. Oh! Good shot, tank! The tank just aced another reaper. 
Uh, you don't normally want to feed the tanks too many kills because they don't gain experience and your soldiers do. But when you see a shot like that, you've got to take it. So that was that was real sniper fire from the heavy weapon platform there. Uh, let's get Gaston down here. Gaston has a rifle. And he can auto-fire. Actually, uh, let's just fire a snapshot. Alright, so we've killed that floater. Excellent. Gaston is going to run this way, get a little bit more smoke between him and anyone looking. Uh, the more squares of smoke you have to look through, the more your vision is decreased. So having a long area of smoke can save you from aliens seeing you. Happery can run down this way, and there is another alien. So these are floaters, as I said, these purple guys. Floaters can fly, so they can be on higher Z levels than the ground. And we're going to blast him out of the sky. Throw that Electro Flare down that way. Don't see anything. And kneel. Kneeling makes you a smaller target. So kneeling is always a good idea in that sense. It also increases your own accuracy slightly. Night Stalker needs 18 time units for a snapshot. And has low reactions, so he's not going to be able to accomplish anything. What we're going to do is we're just going to move him to cover... Okay, there's a Reaper right there. On top of the one who was shot earlier. Yeah, let's move Night Stalker to cover. And then we need somebody to try and kill that Reaper. The bad thing is, Reapers are really, really hard to kill. And by hard to kill, I mean very hard to kill. They take a lot of damage. It basically requires heavy weapons to take out Reapers. So, run away. Our heavy weapons are uh, not available at the moment. So High Priest, why don't you drop that, get a proximity grenade, and prime it. That would take 13 to throw. I'm not sure I can juggle this effectively, because you're all out of time units, so I think High Priest just needs to move up here and hope. Uh, you don't want to really try and disembark everybody super fast because that means you clump up in the exit zone and if you're clumped up in the exit zone then the enemy has a shooting gallery available and they will use it to shoot you. Jarrell, come down this way, kneel right there where you'll be hard to hit and face in that direction. Uh, you can right click uh, as I said before, to turn your units around. It does cost some time units, so don't do it frivolously like I just did, but uh, it's good for directing your attention in certain directions. You can, of course, only get reaction fire in the direction you are looking. So let's end the turn and see how bad this ends up being. But yeah, we've got a dead alien there, a dead reaper there, a live reaper there, two dead floaters over this way, and a dead reaper down here. We're doing pretty well so far. Up, oh, tanks coming under fire. I mean, I say we're doing pretty well so far, but in actuality, I think the uh, the civilian population is being massacred wholesale. So in that sense, we're not doing great. But all of us are alive, and that's really what matters. Now, this is a little bit of a quandary. Rodrigo's rocket launcher is equipped with heavy rockets, which have a pretty substantial blast radius. Can he take a step away? He can't fire an aimed shot now, so he... Yeah. So what we want to do is, I think everyone's out of the blast radius, but we want to move back anyway. So we're going to move back a little bit. Can you see anyone through there? Only that Reaper. Okay. Uh, interestingly, you can open doors without going through them by facing the door and right-clicking. Which is really, really useful sometimes. Night Stalker just kind of hide over here. Let's hit that guy with a rocket. There we go. Uh, they have a large radius effect. Notice, if I hadn't moved, I would have been hit by the edge of that area of effect. Which wouldn't have done much damage, but it would have done some, and since I'm totally unarmored, might have killed Rodrigo. But the Reaper is down. Uh, also notice, on our little health bar down here, you can click on this button to see all your stats. 
that little gray amount is smoke inhalation because all of my troops are standing in smoke. If that fills up the whole bar, they fall unconscious. Um, and unless they get out of the smoke, they won't ever wake up. We don't have enough time units to reload the rocket launcher, so Rodrigo's just going to kneel down. Night Stalker's also going to kneel down. We've blown up quite a lot of our own cover here, unfortunately. So Adam is just going to run over this way to join Night Stalker. And there is an alien through that window. If I kneel down, I probably won't be able to see him anymore. Right now I'm seeing him through the windows. Let's take a pot shot at him. Nope, hit the wall. Oh, there we go. We actually hit him. Good job, Adam. Oh, we can take one more. What's your accuracy? Oh, very, very high. Okay, good. We are going to need to split up a little bit. Gaston, head down this way. Poke your head into that alley, please. Oh, there's a civilian to serve as a meat shield. Excellent. Happery, we saw an alien walking around here during the alien turn. So, Happery... Why don't you advance a little ways, see if you can spot him again. If not, I'd like you to get kind of behind the wall here. Oh! Okay, an alien just saw Happery. So when that happens, the important thing is not to move the soldier who's been spotted while you try and get a visual on the alien. Remember, aliens can only shoot at soldiers that they can see. Um, auto shot is a little bit risky because the low accuracy might make it spray and hit Happery. Let's try a snapshot. I can take two of them. Good shot, Chinstrapnel. Okay, one hit. Um, that said, unfortunately, Chinstrapnel, it's quite possible he will die now because the alien has him in the alien's sights. Jarrell has low firing accuracy. But let's see if we can get in position. Can you take a snapshot at him? Yes, you can, uh, but you only miss. Okay. Eric Tams. Uh, let's move Rodrigo out. We can't because he had to stand up from being crouched. Darn. Uh, what we need is a hero. We're holding out for a hero till the end of the night. Let's get an auto shot. Come on. Yes! He's not dead, though. He's only unconscious. Now, the good thing is, when they fall unconscious, aliens drop their weapons, and aliens, being the stupid critters they are, don't know how to pick weapons up after they've dropped them. So, usually, an alien that's been knocked unconscious will be unarmed. I really hope there's uh, nobody out there, because that was a dumb move I just made. High Priest, if you live, my apologies. If you die, well, my apologies wouldn't do you any good anyway. And the rocket launcher tank should cruise over in this direction. Up, 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 up. There's an alien right there. So actually, the rocket launcher tank should cruise in this direction. There are two aliens. Oh yeah, that reaper. That reaper can't get to us because it's fat, so... Don't need to pay too much attention to it. We do, however, need to shoot this one. No line of fire? What do you mean, no line of fire? Well... Good job, Rocket Launcher, Launcher Tank. You just removed Night Stalker's cover. Nope, nope, run. Get behind cover. Okay, well, hopefully the alien will shoot at the Rocket Launcher Tank, because its frontal armor is turned, and its frontal armor is nearly impenetrable to light alien weapons. Happery can kneel, and that's all of our moves for this turn. Okay, more civilians being murdered. That alien's got a pistol, it looks like. Oh, Happery is under fire. There are still a few living aliens. We do get points, I mean, civilians. We do get points for every living civilian at the end of the match. So we would like to keep them alive insofar as that's possible. That is a Reaper. I could fire at it with Plasma Pistol. But let's see if we can get a Proximity Grenade down next to it. Okay, so if anything moves within about two squares of that Proximity Grenade, it'll blow up and deal significant damage. Uh, then, in the meantime, let's kneel down, and we can spray a few laser rounds downrange as well, just to help weaken the thing. Uh, you may notice where the, uh, the XCOM accuracy memes come from. They're not the best at shooting. 
get a flare out there. And let's get into a little bit of cover. Now, we do need to kill this floater that's down here because he could turn around at any time. So let's get a... We have the tank as backup. What do you mean, no line of fire? Of course you have a line of fire. Oh, no, you don't have a line of fire because, and this is an interesting little bit of uh, trivia, XCOM traces lines of fire from the shooter's right arm, which means it's tracing it through that wall. Yep. Take one step out. There's that other Reaper. This is kind of a bad situation for Night Stalker to be in. What ammo do you have loaded? HE. You have explosive ammo loaded. Which on the one hand is good because it means... Yes, okay, so you knocked him out but didn't kill him. Explosive ammunition is doubly effective on large creatures like this because it hits every square in their bodies. Uh, you just, that was the tank, you just shot the tank. Um, that wasn't what I wanted you to do, but uh, good try. I like your enthusiasm. Let's move the tank out down to here and take an aim shot at him. Okay, great, so we killed him, we lit some boxes on fire, somebody's livelihood is completely destroyed, but you know what, that's, uh, that's what happens when XCOM comes to town. If you didn't want everything you know and love destroyed, maybe you shouldn't have had aliens. That's how I feel about it. Adam Manalo, how can you help us? Um, what I'm worried about is that Reaper running up here and eating Night Stalker's face. So what I would like would be for Adam to move down to where he can get some auto shots. Rifles don't do a whole lot of damage to Reapers, but they do some, and chip damage might be the difference at this point. Uh, Gaston is currently stubbornly blocking this uh, civilian's way. Let's just move out, let that civilian move by in peace. Happery, do you see any aliens? You do see some aliens. There's an alien. Can anyone else likely get a shot on him? Uh, Chin Strapnels and High Priest have both already moved. Let's fire a single auto shot down this way. Ooh, good hit. Good hit, Happery. And then we're going to move back into cover. Jarrell Cortese is also going to join the party down here on this wall. Oh, we see him. Oh, I could take one snapshot. Don't want to, though. I want to get into cover. And Eric Tams. Uh, what if we go over here with Eric Tams? Please don't shoot anyone, Eric. Just please don't. Oh, oh good hit. Solid shooting. You go, Eric. Lord Kappa could get all the way over there, but instead I think I want Lord Kappa to move up just a little ways and then get a flare out to help light up the street a little, a little bit. Then she should, or he, should get back there where she has a little bit more visual cover. Up! Oh, oh! Happery sniped through the window! That's XCOM. Okay, and the tank was destroyed. The tank was destroyed and Night Stalker was killed. Wow. Okay, that was a terrible day. That was an awful turn, and it didn't even trigger the prox grenade, which I was sure it would. Okay, so we do have a Reaper right there. Rodrigo de Armas is set up to fire. If we fire a rocket at him and hit him, we're going to destroy Night Stalker's corpse, but I don't think Night Stalker was carrying anything terribly, terribly important. So, let's get... Oh, High Priest could shoot at him. But you see what I mean about Reapers being hard to kill. This thing's taken several laser hits. There we go, finally dead. Um, one interesting thing to note. Morale, the purple down here, that purple bar, which you notice is partially empty, that goes down when people die, especially nearby. It goes up when aliens die. So you can, to some extent, negate the negative effects of people being shot by shooting aliens. 
Chin the strap null, what useful things can you do? I think you can just crouch behind cover and try not to weep. Poor Happery. So notice, I can't even see the alien who shot Happery. That's because it's in the darkness out here, uh, and aliens have better night vision than humans do. So without lights, like the electro flares, I can't tell what's going on while the aliens can play sniper out there in the darkness. Lord Kappa, can you get one? There's already lights. The problem is I just don't have vision. Get down here. Now, Rodrigo de Almas. Uh, it's been conclusively proven that that is not a safe place to be. Let's see if Gaston can go down this way. I think the civilian went into that building. Let's get into the warehouse. Warehouses are always dangerous places to be, but... Uh, might be less dangerous than trying to cross the open road in full view of alien snipers. Adam. Adam, Adam, Adam. Adam has almost no cover at the moment. Could we get... can't quite get all the way up there. Let's go over to Night Stalker's body. We're going to drop the rifle and pick up the heavy cannon instead. It's instantly going to put him overweight, so he's going to drop his smoke grenade and his rifle clip. Doesn't have enough time units to drop the clip, so he'll just crouch. Jarrell, uh, let's go over here and hide behind the stairs. Oh, that is a poor decision, civilian. Boy, you all are just making the worst life decisions. Okay, so, we have killed a number of the aliens at this- Oh! Okay, well, an alien over there just acts, just shot a civilian to death. There he is. Ah, let's see. Who can we get? Jarrell, do you have high firing accuracy? No. You can fire an auto shot and then still retreat into cover, so let's try that. Wow, Jarrell, you missed terribly. Okay, let's retreat back there. Eric Tams, let's have you pop out. Spray this guy down with coherent light. Good shot. Okay, that's one more down. Um, boy, there really is no cover here, is there? Um, let's look at the map real quick. So that should be about the corner of the map, pretty close. Is that a civilian? That's a civilian. So the remaining aliens, there's one in the middle of the road right there. Chin Strapnel, do you have a shot? If you destroy those stacked cans, you do. Alright, solid hit, but no death. There's the death. Alright. Move back there and crouch. Stay in cover as much as possible. Eric, move up. This is a little bit dangerous, because if there's an alien over here, if there's another alien in this building, Eric is probably going to be shot, but I need to make some progress. Crossing this area is going to be a nightmare. Um, High Priest can run all the way around and get into cover on that side, so do that. Lord Kappa will stay in the backfield and provide overwatch. He has low reactions, but it might work. Uh, these two guys are going to move through the warehouse. Uh, you can, of course, use laser pistols, laser rifles more likely, but laser pistols can sometimes work to knock down walls, which can provide you with flanking opportunities. And Adam Manolo, let's drop that clip. And you get down here into cover of this wall. Okay. There are still a couple of aliens on the map. You can kind of roughly estimate by the amount of time that hidden movement thing takes to go. Okay, there's one. See if we can get a sniper shot on him from somewhere. Jarrell, can you take a shot? You can. Uh, kneel down and take an auto shot. Okay, no luck with that. Eric, do you have any grenades? You do. Not sure if you have the time units to use them effectively, so instead, let's just hose him down. Eric Tams! 
Eric Tams is the man, or lady as the case may be. Up oh, there's another one, down that same alley. Or wait, is that a different alley? That's the next alley over. That's not the same alley at all. Nope. Lord Kappa. I don't think he's seen Lord Kappa, so Lord Kappa should be able to shoot without risking retaliation. And this is why I love laser pistols. They're like submachine guns. You can just spray fire pretty much all day. You can take four auto shots if you don't move with most characters. Okay. There's one more. Uh, let's burn down this wall if we can. Okay, that wall is a little too tough to burn down, apparently. You, Gaston, come out here. Oh, that guy woke up. He doesn't have any weapons, though, so uh, shouldn't be too much of a problem, assuming I could hit him. Gosh. Chin Strapnel. Oh, why did I do that? Chin Strapnel, come over here. Please shoot me, this alien. Chin Strapnel. There you go. There's still some left. Eric, move back into cover. Adam. What do your elf eyes see? Nothing. Okay. I think there's only one. I think there's one alien somewhere across the road. Which means we are pretty much going to have to rush it. Um... Lord Kappa, get behind a window at least. Give some cover. Eric Tams, can you cross the road in one turn? Not quite. Get up here. That'll take that'll give you cover from the left. Gaston, destroy this hedge, please. Thank you. So we're gonna try to cross at the left end of the road where I think we've cleared out most or all of the aliens. We're gonna try to rush it from that direction. And, uh, actually stand up, because you're going to need to stand up to make the run. Jarrell, be at the window to provide cover fire. Rodrigo, come down this way. I have not fired many rockets this, uh, this game, which is unusual. Adam, you can look through the window to provide cover fire in that direction. High Priest, Chin Strapnel. Get down there. Okay. Okay, it's a Reaper. That's actually really good news. Because Reapers can't shoot you. And I think it's only one. I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, I could be about to die horribly. But I'm willing to gamble with all of your lives that there's only one remaining alien, and it is that Reaper that I just heard. I think it was down here. So we're just going to run out across the road, screaming like lunatics. If there is anyone watching with a gun, uh, somebody about to die. Rodrigo, get into that house insofar as you can. The only good thing about Reapers is they're so fat that it's hard for them to move through small spaces. I think that should be the edge of the map there. But that does still leave significant unexplored space. Um, tell you what, why don't you prime that and throw it, like, up there. Oh, and that reminds me, uh, one second. Yeah, there's a prox grenade right there. I need to keep that in mind, because if I move over that prox grenade, boom goes the dynamite and Adam is dead. Oh, gosh, where is it? Come on, you ugly bastard. Pardon my French. Uh, yeah, Jarrell, just stay there. Up, 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 up. No, no. Oh. There's two of them. And he bypassed both of those cro prox grenades entirely. See, one's up there. Oh, that is frustrating and also frightening. 
also pretty terrifying. Okay, two wide holes. I don't think he can get at Lord Kappa, but I've been wrong before, so Lord Kappa is going to back up. Um, Rodrigo, can you be a hero here? Can you get this shot? No, you can't. You can't get this shot, Rodrigo. You're not a hero. You're the opposite of a hero. You just blew up two of your own squad mates. I should accept the blame for that, but... You know what? It's entirely Rodrigo's fault. Can't get any sniper fire on him either. Oh boy, this mission's going badly. But then, uh, terror missions so often do. We've taken a number of casualties, but we are at least going to win. Uh, I'm pretty confident we are going to uh, come out on top. And this is how XCOM goes. It really sincerely is. You take a lot of casualties in XCOM missions. How many people do we have left? One, two, three, four. That's a civilian. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think we have uh, five. We have five individuals remaining out of our original squad of ten. So, five casualties. Not by any means unheard of. That civilian just got munched. Lord Kappa. So, he was right there when he ate the civvy. Lord Kappa, let's move you somewhere it's hard to get to if you're fat. Rodrigo, just put that in your backpack. I'm ashamed of you. You were doing so well. But unfortunately, since we've been flanked now, uh, we're going to have to set up to put some bullets on this guy. We're just going to advance slowly, trying to use our reaction fire against him. Let's throw that up there. Shed a little bit of light on the situation. Oh, he triggered a prox grenade. Oh no. Okay, so when your morale drops low enough, you have a chance to panic or go berserk. If you panic, you drop your weapons and run. If you berserk, you start randomly firing. That's not as bad as it could be because Rodrigo has used up all of his rockets. It's still not good. Okay. There's Ugly. Let's put some shots on him. Okay, that Ugly is down, but I think there's one more because something triggered a prox grenade. Uh, I'm just kind of going to shelter in place. Do you have another light? You do. Uh, where can you throw it? That will be helpful. Throw it up there. And then duck back inside. Okay, Rodrigo, you move up. If I lose this now, I will be so irritated. It won't be the end of the campaign. Losing your, uh, losing your squad early in the game is bad, but not crippling. But I will be highly, highly irritated. Let's get these three guys moving up, forming a firing line. Lord Kappa. Come on, where are you? Oh, gosh. This is what we're going to do now. We're just going to move up very, very slowly. He's somewhere over on this side. But I don't know where. We've just got to kind of push the darkness back. Rodrigo, can you help find anything? What's that? That's a civilian. That's a live civilian. We're going to use him as a sacrificial goat. Lord Kappa, move forward. Oh! We saw somebody. 
Oh no. That prox grenade just killed a civilian. Okay, so High Priest is out of time units. Eric saw somebody. There he is. It's a floater. Shoot. Alright. Eric Tams, actually, you don't fire. Lord Kappa, you fire because he hasn't seen you. Come on. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. Lord Kappa, you are hurting me at a physical level. Also, I think that shot went straight through him. I think this is probably a ghost. Uh, we are definitely shooting at an alien ghost. Uh, be afraid. Be very afraid. Please. Please. Oh, please. Rodrigo, I'm adding can't hit anything to your uh, many and varied list of sins. Uh, you're both a team killer and completely incapable of firing your weapon. In an accurate and effective manner. Uh, in other news, Gaston hates lampposts. Okay, so everyone has now fired except for Eric Tams, and they've all accomplished nothing. So, if I don't kill this guy, he is going to fire back and probably waste at least one or two of my guys, which means Eric Tams, no pressure, but you're our only hope. You got a hit. That was a hit. Come on. Oh! Well, okay then. Um, so on the one hand, uh, there's another alien in that house. I thought we were almost done, but clearly we are not almost done. Gaston, uh, can you make it to cover? You can. No, you can't. Oh, okay. Well, on the plus side, Gaston has spotted them. Yeah, I sincerely thought there weren't all that many left, but I can see now that I was wrong. I don't know if that's that alien who moved down, but probably not. Let's see if we can't wax this one at least. If we can kill this alien, that gives Gaston a chance. Not a good chance, because our entire team consists of uh, drooling morons, but a chance. Uh, I really wish I had some heavy weapons guys left right now. Uh, or have to move it to my hand, prime it, and throw it. 49 TUs. Don't think I can make it. High Priest, you have 52 TUs, but you only have smoke grenades. So let's save those for a rainy day. I need to, if I can kill this guy, then what I'm going to do is move Gaston one step left and try to shoot this alien. If I can't kill him, then Gaston is just going to crouch and hope that doesn't trigger uh, fire. Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please, Rodrigo. Okay, we've broken that down. Hopefully that increases our chance to hit. Nope. No, it does not. So, High Priest. Kneel down, please, to increase your accuracy. I'm using auto shots because, statistically speaking, three shots at a lower hit percentage gives a better chance of scoring at least one hit. It does, however, mean that you scatter fire hilariously all over the map. <gasps> Two hits! Okay, we got that one. That one's dead. Step left, Gaston. High Priest, stay where you are. Assuming another alien doesn't come out of the woodwork, we might be able to survive this. Gaston needs to reload, because he only has three bullets. He also needs to prep a proximity grenade. Open the door. No aliens inside. Okay. Okay. 
You've still got four troops. Um, where did... That's dark. Take cover. Uh, High Priest, can you... Oh, shoot, you can't quite get there. Uh, High Priest, get behind this lamppost. Lord Kappa has no cover anywhere nearby, except for here. So, to look at the tactical situation, uh, we're boned. Super, super boned. We may come out of this alive, though. And if we do, it'll all be good. Uh, okay. Didn't think that would happen, but... Uh, Banzai is, I think, the proper solution here. Nope, never mind. Didn't get to turn. That alien had more TUs left than I thought he would. So, Rodrigo is panicked. Lord Kappa has a grenade. And that is the sum total of our assets. In terms of vision, if this guy walks out here, we won't really be able to see him. So what I need to do is hide and wait. No, 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 no. Okay. Rodrigo. Morale should slowly come up as bad things don't happen. Oh, no. Okay. So we were fired at from down here. We do not see the enemy. Who has the higher accuracy? Your accuracy is 45. Your accuracy is 48. We're, we're screwed. There's an alien. Lord Kappa needs to step out here and shoot him. Kappa, please, 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 please. Rodrigo, you get one chance to shoot him and then you're going to have to run. Got him! There's another one. Oh, it never ends. It never, never ends. Yep. Okay. Rodrigo's the only one left. The only survivor. The lone survivor. Uh, it comes down to this. We've got a... <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a little bit absurd. Um, this is what superhuman difficulty looks like, though. Uh, the aliens are much better than you, and there are much more of them. So, looking at the situation, Rodrigo couldn't get back to cover if he tried. Um, he is going to be spotted. It will take 28 TUs for him to fire two auto shots. They have a 12% chance to hit directly per shot, and then... Uh, there's a small additional chance based on deviation. If it if it deviates small enough amount to still hit the model, he will still score a hit. He can't afford to kneel to increase his accuracy. So basically, whether or not we lose this mission and the Sky Ranger and everything comes down to whether Rodrigo can hit a target in six shots. I wouldn't bet on it, but I'm gonna have to try. <laughs> Well, it was nice knowing you. Holy crap. Well, Rodrigo can't hit a target in six shots, but he can survive a plasma bolt to the dome. Wow. Um, you have 57 TUs. You could spend 14 of them shooting back and then probably still flee. Or you could throw a proximity grenade. Um, but I think that would also result in you dying. In any scenario where you die, we lose. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Victory! 
Victory! Rodrigo pulled it out! Wow. That was worse than I had ever anticipated. Nighttime terror missions are terrible. Just awful. Um, I didn't play that as well as I could've. There were times when I could've been more careful and better about what I was doing, but at the same time, I did not quite anticipate it being that bad. So, we lost the tank. We lost 9 out of 10 of the soldiers we sent. We killed 18 aliens. We saved exactly zero of the civilians. We laid waste to the area with a profligate expenditure of ammunition. We lost most of our equipment, um, but we did recover 28 alien artifacts. So, mm, overall, not good. Overall, not good. That said, it is at least better than it would have been if we hadn't gone. If we hadn't gone, we would have lost, I think it's 1,000 or 1,500 points or something. In any case, um, and Rodrigo was promoted to sergeant. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. That's XCOM, baby. That's how XCOM goes. Let's look at Rodrigo the sergeant, shall we? He was wounded. He got five kills in that mission. You may notice his stats all increased because he survived a mission, so he got a little bit more strength, a little bit more melee accuracy, a tiny, tiny bit more firing accuracy, a bunch more bravery, ten more points of bravery. Rodrigo has seen some shit. Nothing scares him now. A little bit more health because he survived being wounded, another time unit, and some more stamina. Um, wow, I'm gonna call it there, folks. I can't top that. Uh, next time, I'll, I'll bring you back in when we've rebuilt a little bit, and we'll, uh, we'll go on another mission. Hopefully a better one. Take care.